Okay, so let me go ahead and put the values in here uh, that we're that's required by circuit three. So R one is equal to what? What's that? Twenty five k. R two is equal to what? Thirty three k. R E is equal to. 2k and our load is equal to what? 5k. Are we okay? Are we okay? So first thing we need to calculate is VB. So VB is going to equal to 33k over 58k. And then we're going to multiply that. To, what's VCC? 20 volt uh, times 20. Of course, we drop the K. Uh, I, I keep mentioning that because we get students in DC that think they can drop scientific notation. The only reason we can drop the K here is because we have a K on the top and a K on the bottom, right? And that's what's nice about using your science, your engineer notation because we're representing a bunch of zeros with a, with a K. <laughs> so what we got? Huh? 11.4. Is that okay? Everybody okay? Uh, then I could calculate VE, since these are silicon, that would be 11.4 minus uh, 0.7. So what's VE equal to? What's that? Okay. Uh, VC is real easy to calculate because VC is going to be equal to 20 volts. But you'll be surprised. We get a class got seven. Hopefully, y'all don't do that. But we'll get we'll get people put a different voltage for VC than I mean, and it's a straight piece of wire. I've never understood that. And they'll do all this math to calculate VC, and VC is a straight piece of wire. Okay, uh, voltage collector to emitter is going to be equal to 20 volts minus 10.7 volts. What we got? 9.3, this guy's bias pretty good. Uh, we would like it to be exactly 10, but exactly 10 is hard to get using standard resistors, right? What else we need to calculate? I need to calculate IE. Uh, so IE would be equal to 10.7 divided by 2K. 5 point something milliamps. What we got? Huh? What's that? Are we okay? What else do they want you to calculate? VCB? A VCB would be the voltage on the collector, which would be 20 minus. Uh, 11.4. So that tells you the formula. What we're doing this for, of course, is to make sure we're not going to break this junction over, right? So all we got? Are we okay? What else do we need to calculate? Uh, RE prime, we, we don't really need it in this circuit. It just gets you in the habit of calculating it. Uh, RE prime is equal to 25 milli over IE, which is 5.4 milli. So RE prime is going to be a little less than 5. What do we got? Milli's going to cancel, right? What's that? 
We have 4.6 ohms. What else do we need to calculate? Z in, first of all, uh, we need to calculate Z out to calculate Z in. So we'll calculate Z out. Uh, it's going to be 1 over 1 over 2K plus 1 over 5K. Dr. Crawford, by the way, y'all know Dr. Crawford? He's the vice president of the college. He's also the dean of instruction. So when we send these core substitutions and everything, he's the guy that signs them off. His office, when he's here on the Bessemer campus, is those curtains up there. And uh, we were doing this class, and we all this math up on the board. He really liked that. <laughs> he made a comment about that. I mean, y'all do the math down there, don't you? But it's not, it's just, it's not real hard math, though. It's, uh, but yeah, he was impressed, guys, so. So what, what, what we got for Z out? What's that? Okay, 144K. Okay. Now we can calculate Z in. Uh, so Z in or R in is going to be 1 over 1 over 25K plus 1 over 33K plus 1 over beta. And what do we use for beta? I gave y'all I gave y'all the beta. Seventy-five times one point four K. So you need to do this one first, and then that way you don't have to use parentheses. Right? So what we got for Z in? Seventy-five times I left off this is twenty-five K. I dropped some. What we got? Well, Z out can be 4.2K because this resistor right here, y'all told me this was a 2K, this was a 5K, and it's there in parallel, so it's got to be smaller than the smallest. I mean, yeah, so, and that's, and th your rules that you learn in DC still apply. So sometimes if it comes up to be smaller than the smallest, it, it don't mean it's right. But if it don't come up to be smaller and smallish in a parallel circuit, you know what? You know it's wrong. So I know this right here. I should I should expect an answer uh, less than 25k because this is times 75. This is going to be 75k over here. So we should expect an answer less than 25k. If I get an answer bigger than 25k, what does that mean? You know your answer is wrong, right? So all we got for Z in. So, uh, Taru, do you see what you did over here? You okay? What's that? Okay, so is that right? Well, it has a chance of being right. Right? I believe it is. Though. Are we okay? So, my AV, my voltage gain, is going to be the big one over the little one. Or, uh, uh, I'm sorry, voltage gain is equal to what? One, yeah, rich, not zero. Duh. A voltage gain is equal to 1, but understand it's not going to be 1, it's going to be slightly less. Uh, AI is going to be equal to Z out. It's going to be the big one over the little one. So it's going to be Z in over Z out. So AI is going to be equal to 12.5K divided by 1.4K. What does that come up and give me? I've run out of room, guys. Nine. Is that what the key says? What's that? Okay. A lot of times when I'm doing these, I don't, if I come over the fraction and I know I got to divide something, so if I, if I come up and get like 12.7543, I don't, I don't erase that. I just go ahead and divide it by my next number, right? You understand? But you can say 8.9 and 9, 9 is the same thing. Anything else we need to calculate? And I'm sorry about squinching this up. But 
this is what I tell you. Y'all use ink, ink, you know, draw circles and arrows and point me around. And all of them are calculated the same. I mean, uh, this guy here is, to me, it's easier than the common meter. The only little thing is before we calculate Zn, we have to calculate what? We have to calculate Z out. Because uh, when, we, when the AC comes flying in, it goes this way, this way. It goes here, and it splits like that. So your input sees these two guys in parallel. That's what it sees. No, no bypass capacitor, but this guy right here, we call this a what type of capacitor? We call this a coupling capacitor, and this guy right here called a what? You need to know the names of these capacitors. For one thing, it's going to be on the next test. Anything else? Of course, number one, I have I have work for you. Pretty simple, uh, but it looks impressive. But where did you learn all these formulas at? Huh? No, no, where'd you learn? Oh, hopefully not. Where'd you learn all these formulas at? DC. And what's so neat, <laughs> what's so neat, that's a good one. What's so neat, though, is, is in DC, all you're doing is producing heat, but now you see a use for these resistors. Why do we have resistors? Well, they produce heat. That's nice. I've got an electric heater at home, too, and that's what electric heater is. All it is is just a lot. Resistor. That's basically what a resistor does if it's in there by itself. But what we're doing now is we're using these resistors to bias these active devices. These guys are passive. These guys are active. And we're setting what class this would be. As long as we don't saturate it or as long as we don't uh, overdrive it, this would be a class A amplifier. But the biggest problem is we got this current that's got to flow through this thing even without an input into it, right? And that's why we lose all that efficiency. So a class A has to be biased on. A class B is biased off, but we 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 put it right at the what, at the cliff of being what, on. And then a class C is biased off. It is biased off. I mean, it's biased hard off. So only a small portion of the input signal drives that thing on, and those guys are 90% efficient. And where do we use those at? We use those in high frequency applications. Where we can use, uh, where we can use a, a what we call a tank circuit to regenerate the signal that we lose, but it depends on being at a constant frequency, right? You understand, and that's what carriers are. Carriers are on constant frequencies, so that's why when you put channel 13 on your TV, you get channel 13 because the carrier is at a watt. It it is at a precise frequency. I mean, them suckers are precise. FCC monitors those things. So FCC monitors those to make sure those guys are as uh, precise as we can be. So, because if they let the frequency drift, then they're going to bleed into somebody else's channel, right? You understand? Then we got problems. Uh, well, I, I don't know if on the CP, oh, CDs, everybody had a CD radio? These guys would use them big old linear amplifiers. And uh, they were supposed to be on 19, and they'd be on 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Because they was using so much power, they was exceeding the power. And what they, when they did the bandwidth uh, on AM, the, the, what, what sets the bandwidth is a lot of it's amplitude modulation. So, uh, you know, if you get your if you get too much power, you actually bleed into other people's channels, you know, which is illegal. But if they got caught, then they'd come in and take all your gear and tear down your antenna and charge you a bunch of money. But uh, now CB is basically a free band, so it's uh, like the 2.4 gigahertz band. So the 2.4 gigahertz band is a free band, so you don't have to be licensed to use 2.4 gigahertz band if you transmit at, letter, at less than so many watts. I don't know what it is. So all your cell phones use what? It's actually two frequencies, 2.4 gigahertz, because it's a watt. It's a free band. Yeah, it's a free band. So they they set up CB as a free they made CB a free band uh, so 
And of course, when they made it free, everybody got cell phones. Now nobody uses CDs anymore. I mean, everybody used to have one, especially when you was going on a trip. So you can listen to the truckers, so they could tell you where all the where all the police were. That's pretty neat. So, any questions? Y'all okay on the worksheet? I'll probably be one of these on the next test, test three, one of these. I'm gonna put that. Uh, I mean, test four. I'm thinking about my other classes. Y'all mean to put that uh, push pull amp on there? I'm gonna put that big old. You want that one to be on there? Huh? <laughs> okay. So guys, let's go. What we're gonna do? Uh, we're gonna finish up, and we're not gonna go in detail as they are in the book. Is we're gonna look at thigh wrister devices. Thigh wrister means it's got at least three junctions in them, right? And one thing that we're gonna look at. Let me start another lecture.